you a an overview of what we're going to have a look at. So quality control tools and batches module. Um, so it's going to talk about um, introduction to batches and just an overview with the new module, the batch setup. So with any new module, there's always an initial setup. Um, adding a new batch, adding a new batch test result and printing batch documents. OK, so I'll go into form pack and then we can have a look at it. So if we just go into form pack also as well, I'll just mention the um, the actual support centre. So you're probably already aware, but for those people that aren't aware, the support centre within form pack um, you can use it to help you with any area that you get stuck with, you need help with, you need assistance with. So there's um, training plans on um, adding formulations and raw materials and all different um, areas in form pack. There's downloads, the GHS posters, so that's quite helpful, tip of the month. There's training videos and also the key updates as well to keep you updated on the latest application changes. Um, and also there's a search bar here. So if there's, there's any area that you need assistance with, um, just type that word um, into form pack. It might be batches, it might be formulations, it might be item class, press enter, and it'll give you a list of results. Um, and these results will be linked to articles that you can use to help you when you're trying to implement things on form pack. OK, so we'll just have a, a bit of an introduction to batches. So batches in form pack can be used for different business scenarios. So batches of product can produce in another system um, for raw materials and formulation, um, and they can be tested for specific attributes. And the results of the testing can be stored using batch properties. Um, and batch documents can be generated to include batch numbers on documentation. So, for example, batches of products are created and form pack can be then used to store quality control results to indicate a pass or a fail and include details on a certificate of analysis document. So batch management allows you to use um, to users to record and report test results from batches. It allows users to print documents for existing batches to include test results of a batch and um, select batches of items to be sent to customers on sample tasks and produce samples. So um, maybe some of you are familiar with the projects module, so that would be used in conjunction with that. And also it can be integrated with external systems such as ERP systems or analytical systems. So this functionality batches, it comes as standard for Formpack Enterprise and it can be added to Formpack Essentials in advance. So if you want to quote on that, just contact us and we can give you a, a quote for you. OK, so with any separate new module, there's some additional setup required. So first of all, we need to add a new code sequence. So if we navigate to manage item code sequences, I think many of you will probably be familiar with this area. OK. On, on here, we can add a new um, item code sequence for our batch. So if we click add. OK, and then input the name of our item code sequence. So we might want to call it batch management. Random fours appeared. Management. OK, so because it's just specifically for item batches, we're going to untick for item codes and select for item batches. And then you can choose which cross reference it might just be applicable to. So it might just be applicable to essential oils or fragrance materials or flavor materials. Um, but it might be applicable to all your item classes. So in that purpose, we'll just click all item classes and you can set it up for specific users as well um, or all users. So I'm going to choose all users. OK, and then you can use it for new codes and recodes. So we're going to choose new code and recode and you can do it so it's automatic. 
So it automatically generates an item code for you, or you can do it for manual. Um, and it's also got a mask and the mask is explained here. So if we have a look in the help button, it gives us the structure of how the masks set up. So if you wanted more information on that, on setting up item codes, not just for batches, just in general, um, if you have a look in the help and also additionally, you can have a look in the um, support and there's an article on manage item code sequences. OK, so it's going to be automatic. Now we're just going to click save. The new item code sequences has been added. So with navigating around form pack, I don't know how you are familiar with, with the buttons, but you can do um, navigation in two ways. So you can use the buttons which take you to specific areas or you can type in the navigation menu, the area that you want to go. Um, and Batches has its own little magic button. So if we click on it, it will bring up a list of all the options that you can use for batches. So what we want to do now is add a new batch property. So we find add a new batch property. OK, and um, so this information you want to add to batch tests. So for example, um, you might want to include physical properties or composition properties um, and batch properties are separate to original properties area and none of the batch properties are expected to be calculated properties. So you can set properties up to best suit your specific business requirements. Um, you have the option to choose from multiple choice, text properties, yes or no properties. Um, and you can also set the properties up to include ranges. So if the results of a batch fail within a given range, it could be a yes or no property. Um, so for this example, we're going to use um, GC. So if we pop our code in as GC, it's going to be gas chromatography. And you can add a description if you wanted to. Um, and the value is just going to be a yes or no. So whether it conforms or whether it doesn't. And we can save that. OK, so we've already added some additional properties for batches. So if we just have a look at those batch properties just to see how they've actually been set up. So if we view a batch property we can see that we've got ODA, okay? So it's a choice property and it's the available values are conforms or it doesn't conform, okay? And also we've got SG, which is specific gravity. OK, so we can see that this has been set up as a number, but it's got a permitted range, so it's from 0 0.88 to 1. OK, so those are our, um, our properties. And what we want to do now is, um, is set a, a batch test class up. So if we navigate to add a new batch test class, OK, so this gives us the ability to configure sets of tests with property values that determine and record the results. So multiple batch test classes can be added for various sets of tests, much like a project template that have um, different setup for different requirements. So those of you who are familiar with the projects module might have multiple project templates um, for different requirements. So we're going to call our um, batch test class a standard. Batch test class. OK, and then we're going to add some properties. We can add a description if we want to. OK, so 
overall status required. So this indicates if it's an overall pass, fail or undecided maybe. And then the arrows indicate um, the order of the batch properties and is required. This indicates whether it's mandatory or not, whether it needs to be inputted. Um, so if we add our first batch property, so we're going to choose odour. So you can also add the corresponding um, property to the item as well. So um, it's optional if you want to or not, but it is um, it can be shown next to the batch property to, to compare the two. So we're going to add that odour. And then we're going to add SG. Specific gravity. And then SG for our item. And we're going to add GC. And then we're also going to add color as well. OK, and you can tick whether it's required or not. So we'll say that those are required. Um, and those two are not at the actually required. I'll add the one for the item. So it will be appearance color. OK, and then we save. And our batch test class has been configured. So the initial setup has been completed oh, already exists. That's because of this morning. Change it to classes. Save. There we go. OK, so now we've added our batch test class, we can add a new batch. So if we navigate to add a new batch. OK, and then put our item, so it's going to be a lemon oil, our item. Okay, and production date is going to be today and the expiry date is going to be next year. So I'll just change the date of the year and quantity is going to be one kilogram, but you can change the unit of measure if you wanted to. TO is just going to be form pack and the item batch sequence is going to be automatic. Okay. And then we just click generate batches. And we've got our batch here. So you can add multiple batches if you want to. And then we're going to click save batches. OK. So that's done. And now if we want to, we can add a new batch test result to our batch. So if we click on add new batch test result. OK, and input our item. Batch test class, which is this one, and click OK. So it gives us the option to add the result. So here we can see it's got the batch ID, the actual batch test class name, item, quantity, production date, expiry date, TO, and creator, created date. And then it's got our actual properties and then the item properties as well it's included so we can see that the odor is citrus and um, it's got a range for the specific gravity and also it's got a color as well which is the light yellow so we can add our details and to compare the two so odor we're going to say it conforms to standard so that's okay and um, sg so we're going to add the range in to say that it conforms, so 0 0.88.
OK. And then GC. So yes. And the colour. So if it's light yellow, we'll say. OK, so these results will probably be generated by lab equipment and manually entered. So there's no validation with the existing property results. The overall status has to be manually entered to determine a pass or a fail or undecided if further work is required. Um, so if we click save. There we go. It's been saved. Um, so if you wanted to, um, you could view the generated batches on the item in other menus and view batches. So if we go and have a look at the menu, so if we just click home, so we can have a look at all the options and view a raw material. OK, and then put the raw material. So lemon oil. OK, and then we go to other menus. And then view batches. OK, and we can see here that we've got a number of batches for this lemon oil. So we can click on the one that we've just generated and view the results. OK, and then you can also edit the results as well if you wanted to. And I want to change it to maybe dark yellow and save it. OK. So if we view the test results now, we can see that we can we've got previous versions to view and we can view the previous versions as well. So version two. Version one. OK, and also we can print a um, certificate of analysis so we can print the results out on a certificate of analysis if we wanted to, or maybe other documentation. So if we go to print a document for an item. Then go to certificate of analysis and it generates the batch ID automatically for us. And then if we go to print to PDF, we can see the information's added to PID. OK, well, we should leave it there then for this evening. Thank you very much, everybody.